Fuzzy Walls boys are now at Uber Beat Studios. Let's go. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> Come on in, guys. Welcome to our lobby. Welcome to our studio. This is um, our live room uh, that we use for our recording studio. It's the big room. Uh, it's where we can people can get real loud and uh, we make stuff sound really cool. It's changed a bit over the past couple years. It was a really, really loud sounding room, uh, mm -hmm. which was great, but it kind of only did one thing. And uh, we decided that we wanted to control the sound a lot better. So all of these sound mm -hmm. panels that you see uh, on, the, on the walls here and up on the ceiling, uh, those went in uh, over the course of 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, we've added some diffusion up here. Uh, and we've got a really nice controllable room uh, that offers actually a lot of different sounds, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. You can still get something that sounds really, really big, um, you know, depending on how you situate. Uh, obviously, with a live room, the main focus is drums, right? Yeah. So, depending on where you put the drums and how you mic it, you can get something really, really big and, and raucous and, and rad. Uh, or you can still get something like really tight and dry and warm depending mm -hmm. on what you're recording. You know, you can do big rock drums, small jazz drums, anywhere in between, which is really nice. You're not stuck with one sound. Exactly. All yeah. The time. So and it's that's nice. Cool. It's nice to have the big, uh, the big drums. You know, but that's what reverb plugins are for, right? Yeah, <laughs> sure can be. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, but we've even I've used uh, the space for. Um, uh, recording acoustic instruments, obviously, you know, like acoustic guitar and everything, just mm -hmm. to kind of get the natural air in the recording. Uh, it's great for doing vocals out here. Uh, yeah. With our hardwood floor down here, you get a little bit of natural spank. And it's all about capturing a vibe, too. Some singers don't like to be in a smaller space. And mm -hmm. we have a pretty size, and I'll show you guys here in a little bit, uh, we have a pretty decent sized uh, space that we use for tracking vocals, but even still, some people like to yeah spread out Just and everything your arms around. yeah and Get crazy um, yeah and with the uh, with how we have stuff kind of set up here we can still have a very controllable space mm -hmm. all around and it not sound you know too wide or too airy or anything um and yeah give it the slap test because that does something. Yeah, right? It does yeah. sound balanced. You know, you don't get that flutter. Yeah. It doesn't sound dead like not, in someone's closet. That is really balanced. Exactly, yeah. And that's what we really wanted is just kind of like we want the instrument to sound, you know, natural. And mm -hmm. I like this room for drums especially because you can actually hear like the shell kind of like bloom and you hear the, the drum resonance instead of just like attack and, mm -hmm. and clank and everything. We really don't have to make huge EQ moves to control stuff or yeah. whatever. Like uh, we can EQ, EQ to taste, you know, and kind of, you know, while we're tracking, it's like, all right, let's get rid of what we don't like, you know, obvious, you know, kind of gross sounding frequencies mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but it's not like, okay, now we gotta, you know, yeah. cut this and boost that because it's just a mess or yeah. whatever. It's, it's, and, uh, so yeah, it's, it's been really fun. So these were all kind of custom made. Um, what's cool though too is all of these panels are removable or on brackets. So oh, if we cool. wanted to go back, if we needed something really raucous and someone's like, I need it to sound like it was recorded in a good sounding garage or sure. something like that, yeah. we can take some of this stuff off and kind of get that claim back. Mm -hmm. House kit here? House kit, yeah. Ludwig Classic Maple, uh, 24 by 18, 10 by 8, 12 by 8. Nice. So those are the same depth, 15 by 15 and 16 by 16. This is uh, what we call our meat and potato snare drum. It's a pearl sensitone, just kind of custom alloy. Nice. But we have uh, a few other instruments that we can pull from. Um, we've got a whole host of snares. Uh, our studio owner, Jesse, is a drum. He calls himself a collector. <laughs> Most people would say hoarder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you can never have too many toys. Superphonics, Ludwig with Superphonics and Black Beauties. Pearl, uh, raw, brass, free floaters, cool Tama Bell brass. And all of this is, uh, I wouldn't say free because they're paying for studio time, but no additional But it charge. is, yeah, that's stuff. You stuff come we in can... and you don't like your kit or you're the engineer and you say, hey, uh, let's try that this. snare drum. Yeah. You love it. Yeah. Because we've got like a million. Exactly, yeah. It's like, what if we need something that kind of like cuts or rings more or something, mm -hmm. you know, or this is sounding a little dead or whatever. Same thing with, uh, you know, amps and everything. We've got a few different amps from uh, Marshall. I've got JCM 900, JCM 2000, PV6505 Plus. I've got a Mesa Trident. One of my favorite amps we actually have is this Marshall. It's a JTM 60. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And a lot of people like the 45s. This sure. is this ugly brown amp, but it's... Oh, that's cool. It's cool, though, yeah. And it's just, you know, it's it's its own thing. It's It's got a good sound. It cleans up really nicely, but it can get... It's definitely a rock and roll um, mm -hmm. amp and stuff. So it's... Most of the cabs that we have around here are just Marshall 412s. Yeah, so, you know, pretty standard. But exactly. Good. Like, if, if those don't sound good, something's wrong. And yeah, all of this room is connected to the control room uh, through this panel. Well, we've also got a snake here, depending on what we want to do. We have, yeah, these are our tie lines for this room right here. And it's all tied in. Um, you know, we have our XLR ins. We also have XLR outs if we want to do any reamping. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, oh, cool. You know, say we want to put, you know, a, a cab in one end of the room and a mic on the other end to get something like really, you know, kind of washy sounding or something, yep. we can reamp through there. We have speaker, speaker outs as well. Um, and then uh, our tie lines for our artist monitoring system as well. Yeah. We have a few other rooms. They're all kind of connected to the control room as well. Um, when we're tracking in here, especially if we're doing like live track, you know, the way I like to track is obviously I like the band to be together and totally. just you can vibe together. And so we're able to actually isolate cabs while we're tracking Sweet. drums and stuff too. Uh, there's a That's small little patch panel right there. We can run some speaker lines in here. Uh, tie lines. Exactly. And that leads us into this room over here. Different vibe in here. I can hear the sound change immediately. Exactly. Yeah. So. When we were changing everything in the studio, well, obviously changing everything in the studio is, is a bit of a stretch. But when we were uh, adding all this, uh, you know, acoustic treatment and everything, we realized that once we put all this stuff up over here, we realized that this is a really, really cool vocal booth. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a great ceiling height up here. Oh yes. You have great field of view. Someone can be in here and still see uh, the control room. Uh, so if they you know, something's on fire, we can tell them, hey, get out. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's not claustrophobic. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people feel like, oh, you need to record your vocals in something the size of a small closet. Well, it's oh, not no, true at all. Definitely not. Yeah. This is um, ideal. This yeah, is this is really comfortable. Obviously, there's plenty of room for a chair if someone just needs to sit. Can I sit? Absolutely. Sweet. I really appreciate chair. it, yeah. Oh. And if you look to your left, that's where our other patch <laughs> panel is. Oh, or swinging right around. Yeah. Hello. More XLR ins and outs, Cat5, and uh, speaker cable no! connections. <laughs> and we can actually, uh, so we're also, so um, we have four speaker outs, speaker ins and outs or whatever, mm -hmm. quarter inch cables, we'll do that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> two of them connect to the live room and two of them connect to the control room, uh, which we can check out as well. And nice then, networking. Um, yeah. So it's it's really, we liked having that kind of interconnectivity, you know, flexibility. You yeah. Know, we can kind of hide stuff anywhere we need to. It's nice because fans will always say, hey, can you do this? And it's yeah. nice to be the yes person. Exactly. Yes, I, love say, I love being able to say yes uh, because it makes people really excited. Yeah. So. Better than no. Yeah. Cool. And you can actually see right here, um, these are three of our artist monitors. We use a MyMix system. Oh, um, it's this a, is new to me. Yeah, it's a Cat5. Um, That's what you cats. see. Yeah. And you can turn knobs. Oh, I don't know what I did there. Yeah. Soft abstract. Hal, what are you doing, Hal? I always I have to tell people it works like a first generation iPod where you like oh. scroll and click. Oh, <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. I remember those. Yeah. So, and we actually just got a new adapter for it. So we're able to use a uh, web-based app to create custom screens what? for this. Uh, so it's really cool. Um, it kind of, it's this interface that connects to the computer and then connects to your MyMix system. We call these your more me's. So if you're playing yeah. bass, um, you just um, scroll down to it, you click it, and then you're like, I need more me. So you can mm -hmm. turn up bass and get more you. There's the less suck knob. Right, yeah. Um, same thing with guitars, vocals, mm, uh, your typically. click, talk back and stuff. If you need to so in the person in the control room can yell at you. Oh. Someone was in here recording some group vocals mm -hmm. for an R&B project, so they were all able just to plug it right in. They're all hearing the same thing, and they knew when to make pretty. So mm -hmm. make pretty, make pretty. Speaking of make pretty, yeah, uh, yeah, the elephant in the room, kind of. Yeah, uh, this is one of our stuff. newest toys. It's a manly reference cardioid tube mic. Um, yeah. it sounds awesome. This thing can record your thoughts. Mm. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna walk away now. Yeah, this is a piece of equipment 
that honestly just sounds done mm -hmm, when you're recording. Mm -hmm. And that that's one of the first times is like I realized, you know, I want to work with stuff that I don't have to, to fight with. Yeah. Totally. And once we got this, uh, you run it through and we'll see some of the mic pre's that it sounds really rad through. Um, but yeah, it's like, man, you know, just EQ and compress a little bit to taste mm -hmm. and but it's like it's it's clear it's it's present um, and, Dangerous. Uh, yeah, it's dangerous. It sounds awesome. So baked in awesomeness. Yeah, exactly. Had. Yeah, absolutely yeah. Um, They're they aren't cheap, but no Definitely worth it for a primary. Vo I've used it for acoustic guitars, too And like just you just hear the depth, you know of the body of the guitar and everything too. Mm -hmm. It's there's so much dimension uh, It's one of those cool audio buzzwords that people like to use but yeah you just yep. hear here it's it's deep it's wide it's full you're like awesome mm -hmm. yeah so um definitely um i want to get like five more so yeah <laughs> me too i'll take one yeah the fusers are very cool looking yeah very cool looking i like that there's corner i mean a lot of these i mean this isn't a small room but in a room the size, you don't want to just say, oh, it's it's not tiny, so we're just done. It looks like you've really thought through the diffusion exactly. yeah. and the absorption. And even to my ear, this sounds super neutral in here. It and sounds what we're good. going for. We don't want anything to, you know, to affect what we're recording. We just mm -hmm. want the source material. Yeah, not like big room and then shoebox. Shoebox, mobile. exactly. Yeah. 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 I hate it. Yeah, so, and it's, I really like it. And I think when, a, when, uh, a client is comfortable too they're going to perform a lot better too oh, and if they're yeah. you know bunched up like this trying mm -hmm. to sing it's you know recording is awkward mm -hmm. and red light fever is totally a thing where you're just very aware yeah. of what you're doing so if you can just be natural relax and kind of forget that there's a microphone you know in your face and you can just sing and do your best performance it's great and that's worked really really well we've captured some great vocals out of here um we're lucky enough to have ann wilson record out of this room wow uh, it was awesome um, check out uh, her uh, her band. Her and her band did a cover of Rooster by Alice in Chains when they were honored by the Mopop. Too. Right? Yeah. They, um, so and they actually shot a music video here too. Um, so I definitely uh, have to link that in the description. Please yes. do. Yeah, it's it's great. You know, you see one you know Pacific Northwest legend honoring another Pacific Northwest mm -hmm. legend, and we were just so honored that she recorded here. We mixed it here, uh, which is even really cool. Is the people that shot it are the people that did uh, Macklemore's. Um, downtown music video and thrift shop so yeah again great vocal booth great guitar booth too um for acoustic guitar um I and again we'll use it for you know cabs and stuff when we're doing scratch tracks or even keeper tracks too you know because mm -hmm. it sounds cool you have some uh there's some depth here too so you can you have plenty of space to you know, yeah. put mics and mm -hmm. experiment and play with stuff or whatever so. You're not dealing with an ISO box this is a this is a room yeah it's got some room exactly yeah fire alarm too Right? So, again, if you need to get out, you can get out. So, <laughs> get out. So, this is our control room. Uh, we have two other isolation booths over here. One of them we kind of are using for our kind of storage room uh, where we keep uh, cables, our mics, mm -hmm. and stuff, everything. This was, this was used to be our vocal booth, um, but it's pretty small, you know, and, yeah. and it, again, it sounded great. But we just wanted something to be a bit more comfortable. Sure. And this is another I great, um, you know, small to medium sized isolation booth. Great for guitars. Still great for vocals too. Um, and uh, you know, it's just an extra space to kind of hide stuff in there. That mm -hmm. everything's all interconnected. Well, what do you have hidden in there right now? Uh, nothing. <laughs> That's not very fun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lamp. I could hide in there. You could. Yeah. There's a cool patch uh, panel right fun. there. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, I think when I first saw the studio, this was being used, like, there's a Marshall cabin there, and it was mic'd up. Yeah. And uh, it looked pretty cool. Yeah, it's good for uh, guitar overdubs, just because it's it's right off the control room, yeah. so just that kind of transit between, let's try this mic, or let's try this placement, or, you know, let's swap out a cab, or something like mm -hmm. that. It's just, you know, the time to travel is a lot easier. Oh, yeah, you're mm -hmm. kind of patch there. panel right there, yeah. so there's none of that traveling. Yeah. Right on. Exactly, yeah. So super, super duper easy. Sounds pretty you know. good in here too. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. All right, all right. And then uh, might as well, should we take a gander in there? Sure. Right, show you some of our cool mics and other toys here. We've got our Avalon DI. Great for basses, a lot of tonal options there. We've got a couple radio st uh, radial stereo DIs. 
and I actually will track guitars with DIs as much as I can for reamping and, and stuff for tones and everything. Can't go wrong with the Sans amp. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, this is just our cool, our I call it our war chest. <laughs> <laughs> That's a you know it's where we keep our mics. Have our large diaphragm dynamics, couple Beta 52s, AKG D112, Audix D6. I love Audix D6s. And then down here, these are pretty rad. These are DPA 4011s. Ooh, which don't look like much because they're all black in a black case. Mm -hmm. But these are some of my favorite mics. Um, they sound awesome. Their small diaphragm condenser mic, but they handle really high SPL, so you can they can handle really really loud sound sources, mm -hmm. especially drums. Great for drum overheads, but you still get a lot of again. We we talked about like the dimension and the detail mm -hmm. and all the cool you know audio engineering buzzwords that like we pretend to know what they mean, <laughs> uh, but they really do. You know you don't just hear like cymbals and and hash and and high end noise and stuff. You hear. You know, you can hear stick noise hitting the bell and mm -hmm. stuff. So you can hear a lot of really cool stuff. So there's a really good, like, mid presence to it, which is awesome. Um, for all you podcasters out there, sure, SM7B. Oh, necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Got a stereo pair of Neumann. Neumann? Neumann? Neumann. Neumann. That's a new, work, new yeah. version of it. Man, what? I'm going to get roasted for that. Uh, yeah. let, let it happen. Yeah. 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 This guy doesn't know how to say Neumann. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> uh, these are KM 184s. Um, really great, vibey. Um, really, really cool. Uh, small diaphragm condensers. Those are great mics. They Those really are. are. Yeah. Not that the other ones aren't, but that one just really. really yeah, they're really, really me. fun. Yeah. I miss having them. Yeah. Uh, Electro Voice RE20. Again, for all you podcasters out there, great mm -hmm. kick drum, bass cab, vocal. I cut, I've cut vocals with them too. They sound really, really good. Especially, I've had good luck with you know like metal, like really aggressive, screamy, you know, tough, tough person vocals. Um, the Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster vocals, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You can beat the crap out of that mic and you get all the all the low end and growl, nice. which is awesome. And we have a couple Royer. Uh, R122s. These are the active ribbon mics. They also look like lightsabers. Nice. Aww. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. I love their uh, clips. Can't go wrong too. with those. You cannot, yeah. The clips are nice. You still get the branding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, don't forget. Yeah. Royer. Yeah. I got nothing but love for those mics. Yeah, oh, they're great. What other goodies do you have in there, Gavin? Oh man, uh, I mean we have your typical. Can't have enough of these guys. No, nope. SM57. Nope. Well, lately a lot of people have been hating on them. Why? You know, I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. But it, that's the beautiful thing about audio. Oh hi! <laughs> <laughs> is that, uh, it is subjective. And sure. If yeah. One day I love them, and the next day I'm like, I don't get it. They're yeah. just nail sounding. They're scratchy, and then then I'll throw it on vocal one day and be like. Why do I have a condenser mic? It's they're yeah. they're controversial. There we but go. To say yeah. they're controversial. Controversial mics. or polarizing even. Yeah. Mm. Everyone has one. Yeah. Except yeah. for Josh. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, I did. Josh, please comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got uh, a stack of five of these uh, 421s, mm -hmm. uh, which everyone uses on toms and guitars and. All sorts of stuff. Good. Again, meat and potatoes. Non-controversial. Non-controversial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which honestly, I would. All right. I'm gonna get controversial. Obviously, Ooh, Sennheiser makes great products. Obviously, yes. you know. So don't don't kill us, please. <laughs> uh, but I I prefer a 57 over a 421. <gasps> it's just me. Someone like was like, which one you want? I'm like, I'll take the 57. I get that. Yeah. More, right. But I like I like a 609 or the 906 too. I guess is the other one. But like mm -hmm. the the square side address ones, which we we have one of those out there too. Those are really fun too. Yep. So need the variety. There you go. This is a cool mic. <clears throat> this is another tube mic from Audio Technica. It's a 4060, and again, it's a cardioid um, tube mic, yes. and it sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's nice and kind of warm. I, it's it has this thing where it's 
it, it has a lot of high end to it, but mm. there's also like this, I'll call it like a smoky low end to it Ooh. as well. It's, it's, I would say it's a little darker than like the reference cardioid. Of course, I'm saying this now. I'm offering my opinion, and yes, then I'm immediately yeah. gonna get flamed. Oh, on, yeah. Yeah. Bring it no, up. he's wrong. Mm, always wrong. All these opinions yeah. help get to a sound. So. There we go. Yeah. Opinions are like microphones, <laughs> right? Yeah. Some people have none. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, those are cool. Um, this, these are fun. 451s. These are kind of studio staples. Like I don't think you kind of have to have AKG 451s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. They're good, all-purpose Swiss Army knife. You know, clap mics. Clap mics, yeah. Room mics, <laughs> overheads. You know, or good for like hi hats. Uh, it's nice to do the the fifty seven and four fifty one thing on the snare drum, mm -hmm. which you know that, that you that's know, classic to too. Stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. possibly controversial also. Right. Yeah. Mainly on Zildjian hi hats though. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Only Zildjian. Hi -hats, though. Only. Yeah. Uh, this is a fun mic too. Unfortunately, this company isn't around anymore. But Whoa. we have a cool sub mic. What is that? Doesn't that look cool? That is cool. Yeah, new sound. I've never even heard of that. This is the, you know, facing out, and this is where it captures it. So if you've seen like those Yamaha sub kicks, or yeah. mm -hmm. even in the old days where you <coughs> wire the, switch the, the polarity of the NS10 woofer, mm -hmm. and you get the low end and stuff like that. So this kind of does the same thing. It sounds really cool. I've used it on guitar cabs and uh, bass cabs just to kind of get some more of that kind of low end, I call it cloud because, mm -hmm. you know, it's fun to be silly. <laughs> it is I fun to be that. silly. Yeah. Uh, but also again, great on kick drums too, just to kind of get a little bit more of that kind of, you know, you feel that air, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. that kind of, you know, the kick drum, a good kick drum's gonna like hit you right in the, the chest and the gut, yep. but then there's that low end that kind of like lifts you a little bit. Mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was my feet. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like that. Yeah. You know, if we're recording, we plug into the walls, everyone's ready to rock. Uh, everything's gonna be hitting a mic pre first, and we have a few different flavors, which is awesome. So this is mic pre land? This is mic pre land, yes, exactly. Four, four pack of APIs, it's a 3124. Which is really cool though, is this is a summing mixer as well. Mm -hmm. So some people, uh, there's a couple engineers, they're doing like guitar overdubs and stuff. They might have a few different mics on uh, on a cab, and then they can kind of do the summing and then just have it go out to one channel as well. Yeah. So instead of, you know, they, they get their multi-track, and then they can just kind of sum it down and be like, this is the main tone. It's a mini know? console, so exactly. you're talking about this so I can yeah. make it visual here. Is that these guys? Okay, so we got an AUGS return. Wow, this is complicated for a mic pre. Right, yeah. Coming from a mastering engineer. Yeah. Mm, but, but yeah, API, would they up. say that APIs are the sound of rock mm -hmm. or something like that? And, um, but again, like super detailed sounding mic pre's. Um, you know, a lot of people use them on drums. I like them on overheads. Hmm. Um, I like them for yep. vocals. Um, just very detailed, loud, present. Um, we have. These two, these probably get the most use here. This is our two four packs of Vintec 473s. So it's like a Neve 1073 clone. Mm -hmm. They sound really, really good. You can drive the input transformers with the red knob and then dial in the trim with that, this silver knob here. And then you have your high and low shelves um, just to get, you know, shape the tone a little bit. We've got a Manly Slam. Yeah, it's kind of hard to miss that one in the right. Right, yeah, it's so bright and everything. Uh, this is a great uh, tube mic pre and a limiter. It mm -hmm. has an optical and a FET limiter on there. Yep. Um, I use the, I'm a big fan of optical compressors. I just think they, they do a thing. Me too. Um, you know, a little bit more. Um, it, they sound a bit more natural to me. I don't know. Um, yeah. Again, this is something to be like, nope, he's wrong. Oh, I, always, yeah. wrong. <laughs> always wrong. That's yeah. okay. Uh, but it's great. Uh, what's really rad is you can engage the limiter circuit while you're tracking. I use this a lot on vocals just because, you know, manly, uh, that manly tube mic into the manly mic pre, mm -hmm. lots of tubey warm goodness. Just um, a match made in heaven. Exactly, like yeah. Fender into a Fender, right, Les yeah. Paul into a Marshall type, you know, yeah. once again. Just look at that design. Like, even if it didn't do anything, I'd want it in my rack to just look yeah. cool. Yeah, Manly's always been really good about having cool aesthetics. I mean, like, the, oh, the yeah. mic there, you're just like, man, it's it's almost art. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. Mad props to them. Yeah. So, uh, right below those, we have a Brent Abel 1272. So, again, a, a different uh, type of Neve circuit. Um, 
It's a good, just a good, full sounding, good, really good on guitars. Mm -hmm. You know, just I can like imagine. yeah, just nice and full. Uh, right underneath that, Focusrite ISA four twenty eight. I love the filter on there, just to mm -hmm. kind of like cool. It sounds good. Um, again, great on guitars. Uh, you know, guitar amps and stuff, and then just kind of you know get rid of the low end you don't want. And you're you're mm -hmm. almost there. It and seems like a lot of people classify the Focusrite stuff, or at least the ISA stuff. Is kind of just like, oh, we have that, you know, it's utility, we can't get rid of it. But I, I, I think it's better. It's a that. great pre. I yeah. really do. It's really, really cool. This Midas 8-pack, mm -hmm. again, like, it's just a good sounding mic pre. Has a high and low uh, filter on there, so you can kind of just get rid of what you don't need. It's also so teeny. Exactly, but it sounds Is it for good. ants? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a mic pre for ants? <laughs> it kind of um, might be. But it's yeah. great for... Um, you know, just if you just need some extra channels, you know, mm -hmm. and it sounds great. We're really happy with it. And, you know, it has everything you need, nothing you don't. Sweet. And is this the air intake for the turbo down here? <laughs> uh, yeah, and then below that's the flux capacitor. Perfect. Yeah. Change the filter, please. <laughs> Change my filter. Uh, we use a patch bay here. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, uh, which just keeps everything flexible. You can mix and match mic pre's and everything. So, uh, and then all of the... Uh, recording spaces, live room, vocal, ISO booths, and everything, they're all connected to the patch bay, and then from there we can send it to whatever, however we want to process it. Let's look at the centerpiece of this studio over here. What's going on with this thing right here? So, yeah, like you said, this is our centerpiece, our, our, our Star Trek Enterprise bridge. I don't know. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's our console. Uh, this is a uh, SSL, Solid State Logic, uh, Matrix 2. Um, with Delta Control, uh, which means it is an analog summing mixer, but it's also a DAW controller. Um, so it essentially is kind of two mixers in one. Um, you get the analog mojo of, you know, an SSL of, of input and output, you know, vibe and stuff like that. Which is where on the console? Um, it's where? all kind of on the back, uh, which is kind of nice because it keeps everything tidy. Mm. Um, everything comes in, you have your ins and outs all on the back of the console. So are these uh, microphone preamps up at the top? So there are no microphone pre's on here. This oh. is basically kind of a, a stripped out um, console. The difference between this and like, you know, your, your SSL 4000 Gs or even the more modern, um, uh, this, this and the SSL Matrix. Uh, have a lot of the same guts. Gotcha. The Matrix is like your full-fledged console. Um, mm -hmm. It has mic pre's and channel compressors and the bus compressor, EQs, and everything. EQs uh, as well as all the all the routing stuff that consoles are known for. Uh, any console, you mm -hmm. know, but especially SSL with all of the different sends and stuff. Traditional. Con exactly. Yeah, consoles. and because it has the Delta on there, the Delta controller stuff, um, I believe that's what it's called, um, mm -hmm. it is also a DAW controller. So you can kind of do, have your in-the-box mix and make tweaks that you need to, as well as doing an analog mix and then print it back in. Right here on these faders? So these exactly, are yeah. DAW faders, essentially. Exactly, yeah. And you'll actually see this green button. That's how you switch between analog <laughs> and DAW control mode. What happens if you have press that does it do all right so cool? yeah right now we're in analog mode cool there and so go. all of the faders are at zero and that's typically where at least we've been mm -hmm. because we this is a hybrid kind of mixing setup here most of your mix is going to be done in the box here so it comes out of out of your DAW in this case Pro Tools mm -hmm. um, it hits an input phase um, I'll use that word you sure. know, basically <laughs> there's there is an input on there and with consoles when it hits the input uh, it comes in at a line level. Mm -hmm. um, it there's an input that it hits, and there's some transformery goodness that it hits and stuff <laughs> like that. And you get a little bit of that, and then it kind of comes in, uh, and and then through there we have a bunch of different Q sends and stuff that you can route out to processing Q oh, sends okay. per channel. I was wondering what all the knobs did. If it... Right. Yeah. So none of this is all. This is essentially all routing. We have stereo sends. We also have four effect sends that we can send out. We also uh, have returns back and, and stuff. So yeah, when we're tracking, we use the Q sends for for headphones, but we can actually route them out to external processing. Uh, mostly compressors here. You know, it's like yeah. hey. Love we do a lot of, we've had a lot of luck of just kind of like, all right, you know, this is your parallel drum compression and this is your parallel guitar compression and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So you get that kind of wet dry mix or whatever. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of routing capabilities for tracking and mixing. Cool. When you push the magic green button, 
it goes oh. into DAW controller mode, and then the tracks line up to ah, Pro Tools. That um, is awesome. And then the faders correspond to the fader positions, uh, as well as the panning and stuff, too. This is your digital panning, or your DAW panning right here. Hmm. Analog panning right here. There is an analog panning right here as well, where it's just I like, see, everything's right. panned accordingly, I just need a stereo spread, and mm -hmm. then it comes down on one and two on the analog side. There's different buses that you can, can work off as well to kind of build alternate mixes and stuff too. You have your mix and recording buses, um, as well as how you route stuff internally and externally to like kind of make your stereo print back into Pro Tools. Gotcha. I so yeah, that. it's really rad, but it, it works really great, you know, for recording as well, um, because you have all of your transport controls. Um, mm -hmm. Some people still like that kind of tactile feel, and you have all of your DAW control stuff here, all your transport controls, all of your zoom controls. You can even turn on like plugins and stuff like that through here and everything. Right. So it's, it's really really impressive. And it's then cool. plus, it's nice to see the faders slide around. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. That cool. So um, here it's the uh, they're banked as well. So even if you have you know a huge huge mix or whatever, so you have a hundred tracks or whatever, mm -hmm. you just get um, if you're in DAW controller mode, you get sixteen channels right here, and then you just scroll through the, the banks of, just of bank everything. And bank and bank. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. This board has been here since it opened. This has kind of always been the centerpiece. It seems like it's aged very well. Like It has, yeah. Physically and also, it's still like everyone kind of still needs the same stuff. Totally. Yeah. Um, you'll kind of see over here, we call this compressor world. Mm. When we're doing mix down, we're in mixing phase, we can use those sends to send stuff to analog processing, like compressor world over here. Uh, we have three Haribol Audio 1176s. Um, we have the blue stripe, and then these um, black revisions right there, which is pretty awesome. Every studio has to have distressors. I love them. Uh, they are, they can do a little bit of everything. Um, everyone, they've been on pretty much every kind of rock record, any record really that you've heard since they came out. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a really cool, just a pretty handy, just four channel compressor gate. BSS DPR 404. Interesting. Cool. So it doesn't draw a lot of attention to itself, in other words. Similar to like an SSL kind of style channel compressor or something hmm. like that, where he's like, I just need to squeeze it a little bit. And you said these are Hairball brand? Hairball brand. Uh, PNW, born and bred, a great company. Uh, we're really happy to rep a uh, PNW company up here. Yeah. I would love to hear these. They look amazing. I mean, They sound does, great, yeah. It doesn't mean much, yeah. but these, they don't look cheesy. Um, can I press a button? Go for it. Yes, it has that yeah. thing. Like I believe it does out. all buttons mode in too. Yeah. Yeah. Boom! Look, it did thing. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> I did something. Up in our 500 rack here, um, this is part of our kind of master bus. Um, this is a smart compressor. Um, and uh, yeah, it's similar style, kind of SSL style bus compressor, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we have our DBX 560A compressors. Um, again, just a good compressor when you need to squeeze something. Mm -hmm. uh, and then our cool um, DBX parametric EQs. Again, clean stuff up, you know. I use them pretty surgically just to kind of get rid of stuff I don't want and then maybe add a little low end and high end boost just to kind of, you know, make something, you know, like low, sit a little cooler. Low mids yeah. and highs, yeah. Yeah. What so. more do you need? Right? Yeah. So they're really happy, and um, I know it's they're just one of those kind of, I use the term cheap and cheerful, um, which <laughs> cheap can kind of have a negative connotation, but it's like, mm -hmm. man, they weren't a lot of money, uh, and they work really well, and we haven't had any complaints when we use them, mm -hmm. so, you yeah. know. Uh, our monitoring setup, uh, we use these Yamaha NS10s. Uh, we replaced the woofers. Um, they These are... If, you, if anyone has Yamaha NS10s, they're getting kind of long in the tooth now. Yes. So we did have to replace uh, the woofers on them. Um, no thank tissue God paper for over the tweeters? <laughs> What's that? No tissue paper over the tweeters? No or? tissue on the tweeters, yeah. A lot of people do that. Yeah. How are you powering these guys? I we are powering passive. these with an Aventone CLA 200 power amp, which is underneath there. Back down. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh yeah, yeah, that's cool looking. Yeah, great, great power source. Really clean, a lot of headroom. Sounds awesome. They just came out with a 400 watt version too, which is overkill for us, um, but you know, would be nice. Yeah, be. <laughs> so yeah, that's our, uh, that's how we're powering our monitors. Um, we're in the process of we might be changing out our monitors soon-ish. Oh, yeah. uh, we might be getting some um, Focal twins in uh, with the Focal 
matching subs. Um, yes. So, um, I love NS10s though. Like I know people are like they don't sound good, but the thing is, is like when you're mixing and you get something to sound good on NS10s, it's gonna sound good everywhere yeah. else. Um, that is kind of the thing that yeah. they do. Yeah. You know, you'll see kind of these more of these baffles and panels throughout the through the control room as well. This is all stuff we added in. Uh, we have the base traps have been here, but these panels against the wall, and we have our uh, cloud up top over our mixing position. Mm -hmm. Uh, to really control the acoustics, and in doing that, we've actually been able to get a really, really uh, pretty flat frequency response in mm -hmm. the room without it sounding, you know, like a closet. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, without killing It's everything. comfortable in here. Um, there's, you know, we have plenty of altitude above your head, so you don't <laughs> feel like you're smushed in or anything. Mm -hmm. Sound can move pretty well through here. Yeah. What you hear in here translates well to your consumable devices, your yeah. phone speakers, your headphones, your car. Uh, we have our cheese grater. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. love that name. And uh, I could probably actually grate cheese pretty well. It, yeah, totally. Show us some of your favorite plugins, sure, and software yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot of cool stuff. This is just a session I've been kind of working on uh, for my band, Living with the Bear. Follow us at Living with the Bear on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nice. What's really cool? Here's one of the channel strips I was talking about. This is the Lindell 50. Uh, it's like a modified API console. Um, so you have a few different EQ options. Um, I'm a I'm a fan of the four uh, band EQ from API, so they have the 50B, they also do the classic uh, three, cha uh, three band, and then the graphic EQ, which is really cool. And you actually have two different compressor styles, you have a VCA compressor style uh, and a FET compressor. Very smooth. Uh, which is really cool, yeah. I can want do a lot. this It's now. really rad, yeah. And this is another cool compressor, it's the Townhouse bus compressor, it's like a modified SSL bus compressor. I use it on drums a lot and uh, just like a, a mix bus kind of cool thing. Neve channel strip, that'll pop up. Um, That's also so cool looking. Yeah, Maybe it's spewerific. really cool. Yeah, um, and then we've got a couple. We have a 4000E and a 4000G series channel strip. So again, these are really cool to track with because you kind of get, all right, you get some EQ, you get some dynamic, you can even do some gating and stuff with it. We just to kind of like yesterday. Yeah, just, it's a great one. yeah, it's a really cool thing. And then you get a little bit of, you know, it's not the same, obviously, because it is in this digital space, mm -hmm. you know, but you still get a little bit of the vibe from, you know, what you're working with. And, and in a, a good room like this, you can actually hear it, which is pretty cool. Um, this is the Slate reverb plug and they have another one called lustrous oh. plates for which is a bunch of cool like plate plugins and stuff but it has their own kind of modeling on different types of plugin uh like uh it's a reverb modules right and stuff there. yeah so yeah i typically most of the ones i end up using because when i was learning one of the reverb units a lot was a lexicon 480 it, we we have to have vocal tuning stuff now so mm -hmm. meta tune uh from slate actually works pretty what cool. does that look like i don't know if it's pretty it. neat um Ooh. It looks like this and then you can just dial in uh a doubler through it so why that looks very like satisfying. Why, yeah it's really really cool and then you have all these different you can mess with your tunings and like turn on and off notes and stuff uh and then all of the actual parameters mm. for tuning are all right in here of you know how fast it tunes makes you want to like drive a sports car a little bit yeah it's pretty <laughs> awesome yeah. into a black hole or right something. yeah so Gap. so john <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really entirely cover how this place came to be could you give us like a short little rundown of how this place was built Who's yeah it? sure oh, it's a passion project uh, of Jesse uh, and his friend slash business partner Larry. And Jesse, for the people that don't know Jesse. Uh, Jesse Smith is the owner of Uber Beats. Um, it was his idea uh, to start it with his friend, and they wanted to create kind of an all-inclusive facility for musicians, a place for them to, um, you know, practice hourly or you know, uh, or you know, have twenty-four-seven access to do what they needed to do. Uh, and then also having a recording facility and just have it all kind of be in house and just let you know, musicians do what they need to do. And it took off like a rocket as soon as they opened doors. It mm -hmm. was immediately full. And I don't think they've ever not been close to... We, we've always been pretty full for the most part. And then it was also... Uh, the studio also happened as well because they wanted to have an in-house studio. And Was that always part of the plan? Was it was. Was it part of the 11 years too? Yeah. Uh, it was... I mean, the studio happened with 
the rehearsal side, you know, they wanted to have it all and have it be as full service as possible. Um, I'm not too sure. I know gear has changed, like, oh, from then. Imagine. Yeah, I can't remember really. what they had, but stuff Four track? Is, you're right, yeah. Maybe. Uh, I know this, this console has been here from the get-go. That computer has. We've okay, always had okay. the Pro Tools HD IOs and stuff. Oh, wow. um, uh, it was never, and then Ultimate came along, and then eventually we got the DSP card and stuff, too. So that's, mm -hmm. that's there's have always been, we've always been upgrading. Yeah. We've never been downgrading, and, which is nice. Never downgrading. Um, Jesse has said that when he first opened the studio, or when the studio was first opened, his vision was just kind of like, oh, let's just do demos. Mm -hmm. You know, like just demo quality, pre-production stuff. But with the quality of musicians that are coming through, and the quality of gear that we've had, and luckily, and I've been I've been told I'm a pretty good engineer, which is nice, you it's know. And then some of the other engineers that have come through as well, the quality of work we've been able to do, it's turned into singles, it's turned into albums, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's turned Queens into right, been here. Queens right, exactly. Yeah, the verdict was recorded here, um, which is really really awesome. Uh, we mentioned before, Ann Wilson came through mm -hmm. and did some stuff. We have a guitar tech that has, mm -hmm. yep, Marcus. Um, Marcus, exactly, who has a room here that he runs his guitar tech shop out of here. Yeah. Marcus is great, by the way. He's awesome, yeah. Marcus Check out Marcus, awesome. Chef, Marcus Schaefer if you need your uh, guitar to work, get worked on. How did you get this gig? Uh, I live five minutes away. Well, they, so they, <laughs> they showed up at your house. Jesse's like, I'm Jesse, get in my car. Get in my car, we're going. And then I was taken. Uh, wow. I popped in uh, during a gear swap, actually. Um, I just happened to talk to Jesse and a guy named Tim that was working here and I said, hey, do you guys need help? Like, I've got a customer service background and I've had this, you know, audio engineering background and they were like, actually, yes. Uh, and good timing. So good, that, great that's timing, kind of the yeah. the answer there in a way is good timing. Exactly, and yeah. And talking to someone. Yeah, got lucky, I got lucky, you know, and, and I was proud of myself of like, you know, taking times like, yeah, I invested in myself and, you know, I, I did a thing and, um, and it's it's been fun and uh, and because I happened to because we are a Pro Tools studio and because I had that you know little certification with them said yeah I know how to use it you know I just need to kind of get my you know bearings on the studio yeah. uh, kind of understand the room a little bit um, you know it was cool and, and I became the the house engineer here and then Sean was brought in as a studio manager to kind of oversee like, how do we develop how do we get more people in yeah you know take how do it we, to the next level exactly yeah. You didn't have to scrub the toilet to get the job. No, but I will, and I do, and I take mm -hmm. the trash out because yep. you have to take care of it. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing about the studio? If you had to just pick one thing. I like that the studio punches above its weight. Mm -hmm. And I like that I just just the kind of vibe that it has where it's, it's flexible. And here is a very accessible place that just sounds awesome and it has the right gear run by the right people just to make stuff sound great um no matter what we're recording we've talked gear mm -hmm. we've already talked gear but if you had to pick i mean this is the classic question of if the studio were burning down which let's hope that doesn't happen we've right. mentioned that a few too many times yeah already. but what <laughs> yeah. are your three favorite pieces of gear from here like desert island desert or... island i would grab the DPA 4011s, I'm going to count that as one, because mm -hmm. it's you can't have one without the I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah. I would grab the Manly reference mic, man, re reference cardioid mic as well. Uh, and then I would probably grab, probably, the Slam or one of the Vintex mic. Feel you there. Yeah. Just because those I like. There's, there's vibe in either one of those, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, of just things that I want to kind of protect. And those are also probably like the few of the most expensive pieces of gear well, we have. Naturally. So, so if Jesse yeah. said, hey, we're getting rid of any of those three, you'd, you'd have a lot I'd be, to say I would have, as I would, I would have, uh, I would have uh, a very vocal opinion, for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> so. well, share with us some of your latest, greatest engineer hacks or tricks or tips. I mean, just what, what are you vibing on today? Uh, you know? Here's, here's something, you know, instead of, fighting EQ for drums, tune the drums. What? You, you can tune drums? You can tune drums, yeah. I don't and know you can make them true. sound the way you want them to. No one can do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then MIDI drums. <laughs> well, thanks for showing us around. Is there anything else you'd like to add or any little uh, details to throw at us? 
you know, I, I think we've covered a lot. Uh, it's just been awesome having you guys around here. I'm really happy that we were able to meet and connect through Uber Beats here. Uh, I think it's really special. It just kind of proves how cool the music community in the Pacific Northwest is. And I'm really glad we were able to collab, as the kids say these days. And uh, if you guys like what you saw, uh, if you guys have questions, if you want to come check us out, um, just look us up, Google, or search Uber Beats with a Z at the end. We'd love to talk to you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, and please remember to subscribe to the Fuzzy Walls channel. Anything you'd like to add, feel free to leave a comment. And when that final mix is ready for mastering, Fuzzy Walls is standing by.